Hi there. Loading gray boxes on a EAW processor. There are two EAW processors that use Pilot software, the 8800 and the 3600. The 8800 uses a cross-pair Ethernet cable and the 3600 uses USB connection. To choose your selection tools, communications, for 3600 use the COM port setting, for 8800 obtain IP address by broadcast. I don't have any processors with me, so we're just using offline. If you go online, it will automatically go to found devices and your online devices will appear here. Your online devices, you can then take and drag onto the design window. Same with offline mode. Let's use a UX3600 as an example. Take the device, drag it over to the left hand side. Then double click to open it. You'll notice that there are three input modules and six output channels. This processor is a three in, six out, but the three analog ins are not directly linked to these three input modules. You can use a combination or a single option for these analog inputs. This you can configure by IO config. For this system, let's assume we are using a left channel fed into analog A, a right channel, fed into analog B and a AUX sub channel fed into analog C. If you don't have an AUX sub, but you wish to have a mono sub, we can combine analog A and analog B into this module. This we can call left, this we will call right, and this we will call sub. Three analog or the three input modules, channel A, channel B, and channel C, all have 10 parametric filter EQs, or low shelf, or high shelf, or low pass, or high pass selectable. You also, you don't, on the input modules, have high pass or low pass as additional. You can do gain, delay, or invert polarity. The output modules have a high pass and a low pass additional to the 10 EQs. You have a limiter section, a gain and a delay and an invert polarity. You can also select the input source where the signal needs to be fed from. So these are channel A, B and C input modules, not the analog inputs. If you have an EAW loudspeaker and you wish to load the manufacturer preset gray box you can do this via the gray box window over here when you select the gray box configuration it opens up a separate window the gray box setup EAW gray boxes are loaded when you install the EAW pilot software on your hard drive, under Program Files, the EAW folder, and under the Data folder, you will find the UX8800 and the UX3600. All gray boxes are by default loaded onto the UX8800 settings. There is no difference between the gray boxes for a UX3600 and a UX8800. For this example, let's load a KF730. You'll notice that there are multiple options for the KF730. This indicates the amount of boxes that you have in your array for low frequency compensation. You'll also notice that are, there are different revisions under each one, revision A, revision B, and revision C. Usually choose the most latest one indicated by the date modified. For this example, let's use the 4 to 6 revision C. When I load this gray box into this window, you will notice that in the configure box at the bottom here, we now have two legs. These are the two individual processing paths required for this loudspeaker. The low frequency leg and the mid frequency and high frequency leg. We can assign these 
to the desired outputs. It also asks us information about the amplifier that will be powering these loudspeakers. It is important to know the amp gain setting, either preset on the amplifier or fixed from the manufacturer. This can either be found on the back of the amplifier, written or indicated by dip switches or push, push switches, or you can find it in the spec sheet. For this example, let's use 32. You also need to know the amp power at a specific impedance. As standard, I normally just use 4 ohm and whatever the power rating is for the selected amplifier. Let's say for the low frequency, we have a 3500 watt amplifier at 4 ohms, and for the high frequency or the mid high frequency, we have 2100 watts at 4 ohms. The listener distance selection area asks you information about your audience. How deep is your audience area from the loudspeaker? This will compensate for any air loss or air absorption within the space. Let's say we are throwing a distance of 30 meters. Now press OK. You'll notice that the gray box setting, a lot of the features disappear. This is the manufacturer locking the gray box and locking away all the characteristics and parameters that are specific to these loudspeakers. Channel 1 and channel 2 are linked because we have a low frequency section and a mid frequency, high frequency section for this KF730 gray box. We are able to adjust the high pass filter. This can be adjusted if we are running this loudspeaker with a subwoofer. If I adjust it to 80 hertz, it also gets adjusted on the linked channel. I can select where this gray box needs to source signal from. I'm going to select channel A as this is my left loudspeaker. Back, back in the map section, you'll now notice that my left channel, which is blue, is feeding channel 1 and channel 2, which is also blue. On the right hand side, I still need to load the gray box. I can also select gray box from the map window by clicking there. Opens up the same window. I can go select the same 730 revision 3. Assign this to channel 3 and channel 4. Amp gain 32, 32, 3500, 2100, and 30 meters. See how it populates those channels. I can set this to 80 hertz and now select input B or module B, which is getting signal from analog B. For these two channels, if I want to do any PA adjustment in terms of equalization, this is where I can do any system tuning, grabbing EQ points. for either left or right PA. I can flatten the EQ if I've made a mistake or bypass each individual uh, filter to hear the effect that I'm making or bypass channel EQ completely. Now let's load some subwoofers to channel five and six. You select the gray box, open up, Let's load SB 1000s, revision C. Because these are mono subwoofers, um, either being fed an aux fed from the mixing desk or being mono summed within the processor, I can create an extra leg that duplicates the processing path for the subwoofer onto two output channels. Of this processor. I do this by pressing the plus key and there it duplicates the leg. You can now select channel 5 and 6, amp gain 32, 
and we'll just use 20, uh, 2100 as an example. Notice that there's a cardoid button that appeared on the right hand side when I selected this extra leg. This cardoid button I can use to configure any cardoid configuration I want to do if I have front and rear firing or front um, and rear subwoofers in firing into each other. Press OK. Now my subwoofers are loaded on both channel 5 and 6 and I want this to be fed from channel C which is not input C but module C which is a mono sum of A and B. There we go. So we have our left PA, our right PA and our subwoofer configured with EAW gray boxes. If I want to duplicate these settings onto another processor, in this window, if I have another found device, I can grab it and drag it on top of this device. A little pop-up window will appear that will ask you to either write the settings to the device or read the settings from the device. If I choose write settings to device, it will take these settings that I have configured and write it to the newly connected processor. If I select read settings, it will erase the settings I did configure and only show me the settings on the processor that I just connected. I can't do this now. I don't have a processor with me, but that is how that works. Great. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below or reach out to me. Thank you.